Okay, so let's do some more high def nest video. Um, what I'm doing out here is all I'm really trying to do is prove out some of the physical fit of the kit. Um, as you can see, I've already got the interposers soldered in for the CPU and PPU. And I have the mount pieces and the HDMI connector soldered onto the main board. This is just a prototype board that we're not going to populate or use. He's already going to change all of that, so it's basically just for prototype use, in which in my case that's exactly what I'm going to do. And then he made this template just for the top loader. And he's got it marked right here for putting that like this, corner right down here, and then having the holes drilled out there. So that's what I'm going to try to do next. I think I'm just going to try to use a Dremel. <laughs> um, I might end up using a different tool in the end because I just don't think that I'm going to get the sharpness of those corners of the HDMI connector. And I want them to be fairly close. You know, they don't have to be touching or anything like that, but it would be nice if they were close. Initially, I'm going to try just some clamps. Clamp it down. Okay, now that should be good and set. Of course, my jaws are biting on the inside, so I'm not hurting anything visible. And I think I'll break out the Dremel and just go to town and see what happens. Well, it looks like the holes are right at three millimeter. is what I use for LEDs. Get that done. Actually could start a hole in there. For the Dremel. Now let's break out the Dremel. Here's the drill bit that I use most often. It's actually pretty wide. It's actually wider than the HDMI cutout altogether, but if I could find a very small diameter version of that one, I think I'd be in better shape. And then I'm going to try this one, and I think they call this like a drywall, I don't know what it was called exactly, for using, for zipping out holes in drywall. on some safety apparel here. I do cut in revision. Yeah. That went awful. <laughs> so terrible. It was cutting right into the fiberglass of the, of the uh, template there, which I kind of expected. And I wanted to keep it down right there about where it transfers from a solid shaft into the flutes, the cutting flutes. And I didn't quite figure that out right away. And it was just catching in all different directions and going all over the place. So that's definitely a failure and needs looked into a little further. I thought about having like a spacer in between so that it sticks out a lot further so we could do that a little easier so where this stencil or the template's way back here on the solid shaft. Let me do a little clean up here. God, out of all this pile of screws, I only found one 
440, which is, I think is what our uh, mount brackets are. And I could not find a second one, but I did find, I guess, what our metric screws that are kind of self-tapping, and I can just get them in there. Spread them out a little bit, make some new threads. I think I can use that to rig this up and mount it finally. Let me clean all this crap off. Okay. Oh. Here, I forgot we got a rib in here. It's got to be cut. super pumped about that either, but there's not much we can do about it. Oops, I forgot. It sits in there upside down. <laughs> Looks like the pins on the bottoms of our brackets are way in the way. We had it designed to sit right on that cart throat ledge, if I'm not mistaken. I did not get my stencil lined up very well. I'm trying to sit it right on that ledge. My holes are too far down. Crap. So either the stencil's wrong or I got way off when I clamped it down. Yeah, it's just not going to work. do the holes, so I'm just going to take the cart through it out for now. I'm up way in up on this end, maybe because of the rib. Oh, it looks like the bracket prongs off the bottom of the PCB are hitting the rib. Probably didn't take those into account. Times the charm, hopefully. There 
HDMI connector is not going into its hole very well either. That could be part of the problem. I need to make my screw holes just a little bigger. It'll allow for some slop there. Wouldn't hurt nothing. Okay. That's terrible. <laughs> and we haven't set settled on screws, of course. I pick whatever I could so we could end up using silver screws. Looks like it sticks out just a hair. Not really a problem. But it does suck about that routing that out just not did not come out very well. I don't think anybody's gonna have a problem with it being upside down. And then one of the real tests here is to put this in. No, I don't think that's good enough. I think it's sitting right on that board. And it doesn't even have components on it. And it <laughs> and yeah, it needed to come uh, down further, right? Because it was in when it had the cart throat plastic in there, this was hitting, so it needed to be down further, which is gonna push down onto the interposers even more. That's exactly all the way in, and it is definitely bouncing off of the board. How visible that is. It's hard to get that on camera. So, that might need to be rethought. That's a pretty good shot of it, too. See, the PPU is right on it. And it doesn't even have the FPGA or anything else on there, which I don't know that anything else sticks up further than the FPGA. Hmm. It does look like we could come forward towards the power reset buttons. And then maybe go down a little bit. So that we're off of that cart through plastic ledge. Which is, it's good to know all this stuff now because Keftris is getting ready to do a revision. of all the boards. Yeah, we can come down here fingers off of them brackets are hitting down there again already. Making it not level. Oh, I don't know. That's going to be really, really tight. Hmm. And the interposers are really, really touching right there. 
be nice if the CP was offset the other way. And also, I like to drag solder those connectors on there. And I notice when I do that, my soldering iron might have the possibility of coming really close to a lot of those pins right there and bridging them. And I really don't want to do that. So if they could be moved over, that would be excellent. And it wouldn't matter if they were moved to the top of the board because the same thing happens up there, of course. But anyway, I guess we're going to have to look at this a little better. Maybe move that, uh, we'll definitely move the template to a different spot. Have another crack at it. But anyway, that's really all I wanted to do in this video, is just mock it up a little bit and see if there was any. Oh, you know what, I want to try an AV Famicom too, but uh, I was able to find a really shitty top loader shell that I didn't mind tearing up a little bit. But the AV Famicom, I can't find an AV Famicom shell that I own that's in terrible shape, so might wait for somebody to show up with one, but I think we're going to have even more problems because I think the AV Fami cuts off in right in that area and goes flatter and down further still. So I guess really another uh, way to fix this is to solder the CPU or the interposers down to the motherboard directly. That's a possibility. Because I've got two sockets and the header in there. So if we eliminated the sockets on the motherboard, probably would be the best idea since CPU and PPU can and will fail. Yeah, that might be the best idea for clearance anyway. That would, that would uh, probably relieve my anxiety about the AV Famicom too. But anyway, I think that's good enough for this video anyway.